What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris Mann. I am here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. Um, my name, again, is Chris Drummond. I'm a freelance sports reporter based out of Minnesota here. Uh, I'm also a casino host and proprietor of this podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder, where I bring individuals on to talk about their why and what they do and how they do what they do uh, and who they are as a person. I got a special guest that's coming on with me today. Her name is Brianna Shackleford. Uh, she is the sports director based out of West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, she is also play-by-play commentator for the Big Ten Plus. Uh, she is also a Troy University graduate. So we're going to talk to her about her why, uh, get to know her a little bit, um, and just be able to break bread with her and be able to get to know her. So without any further ado, I introduce to you Brianna. Back a little bit. Hey, let's see. Hello. Hey, Brianna, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm glad we finally connected. How you? Uh, how's your week going so far? It's going pretty well. You know, fourth is tomorrow, so hopefully, praying for no rain up here in Indiana. But it's kind of looking like it's going to rain. Yeah, I know. Being here in Minnesota, it looks like it's kind of going to rain too here. So I totally understand. <laughs> I get that. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you for coming on my podcast, being able to talk to me, work hard, play harder. Um, I also want to reiterate to you why I wanted to bring you on. Um, I'm a sports reporter based out of here uh, in Minnesota. Uh, I've been doing this for about five years from Atlanta and Minnesota on. I love talking to different individuals about their why, of why they do what they do and get to know them a little bit and kind of network. I know you're a sports director based out of Indiana right now. Uh, I also know you do play-by-play commentary. Uh, for the Big Ten Plus, uh, and I know that you're a Troy University graduate, which we're also going to get into that as well. So obviously you love sports and love commentating and love being around sports as much as I do. So it's a no-brainer to talk to somebody like you uh, who's likewise and passionate about sports, uh, journalism, as much as I am. So once again, I do thank you. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So my first question, Bree, or do you want to be called Bree or Brianna? Uh, you can just call me Bree. Okay, I got you. I always love doing that. So, Bree, my first question is, what is your why? What is your why of doing what you do? What is your why of getting involved in with sports and journalism? Did you have any role models growing up, uh, anybody that inspired you? But ultimately, what was your why of getting in, getting into the industry? So, um, my why is actually kind of funny. It's a little bit of a two-parter so um when I was at Troy I was a soccer player um pretty much like was got school paid for and that's why I went down south to go play in the fun belt um it was Mm -hmm. really fun while I was there but um when I was at Troy oddly enough um one of the classes that you had to take it just as a general ed course was computer sciences and that was the course I heard that everyone failed all the time. Like it was a really hard class and huge curve. And I didn't want to risk my GPA. So I said, okay, what well, was another course I could take instead of that? And they said technologies and journalism. And I was like, you know what? I've always loved sports. This could be a fun path to go down. Sure. Let's try it Absolutely. out and see if we like it. So okay. that's how I got my major, which was broadcast journalism. But then And um, while I was learning more about the industry and everything, and also just being an athlete myself, I realized how important it was to give athletes a platform to tell their stories. Because a lot of the times when you're watching a game, like you watch it because you love it. And obviously you're going to cheer for your team, cheer for the other team to lose, whatever, whatever. But if your team has a bad performance and certain players have bad performances, they just get hit, hate the entire time. And so I wanted to say, Hey, True. We're more than just athletes on the field. We're more than just the numbers on our back. Like we're people too. Like um, something a lot of people don't know about me is the fact that I um, minored in legal studies to possibly go to law school. But that's not okay. something you would know if you just see me running on a field and like you know trying to stop a forward because I was a center back. Like sure. it's more so to I guess humanize the athletes that you know people look up to and see all the time and. I thought it was just a really important way for me to kind of 
give back to the community I knew and grew up in for 18 years. Plus, it was a great way for me to stay in my community. I love being an athlete. I don't want to leave it. Absolutely. No, I totally dig that. That's what's up. Now, you talked. About, we talked about Troy University. I want to know, were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to Troy University? There were a couple schools. Um, and honestly, at the end of the day, it just had to do with a, I didn't want to walk in snow to class. So any school in Indiana was basically out of reach for me. Um, yeah. And then B, I wanted a place completely new that I've never lived in. So that meant schools in Arizona that were also interested were like kind of pushed to the wayside. Um, mm -hmm. But also it came down to, can I get a scholarship for all four years? Because I wasn't going to put my body through torment <laughs> for four years of Division One college soccer if I wasn't going to see any benefits from it. And, you know, there is a school in Arizona that offered me like a roster for freshmen, three years for scholarship. And I was like, I'd rather take four down in Alabama. Plus, it was a new adventure. And the coach may have persuaded me by saying we were two and a half hours away from the beach. And as a girl who hates the snow, I didn't want to go in the snow. I truthfully, I hate the snow, too. Uh, when I but. Here's the thing. When I got the the different offers that I got, I got five different offers from different publications that wanted my services as far as writing for sports. So um, Idaho, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I want to go to the land of the potato. Um, and then I had Missouri, which was going to be cold, too. Uh, then I had Minnesota. And then I had two in Indiana. But the two in Indiana, uh, they were just very – yeah. I, I, and I love me, Indiana, Indianapolis. I love that my brother is Gary, Indiana, so I'm very familiar with that. No question. He lives there. So – um, but I was like, I'm going to go to the cold regardless because it just seems like the cold is calling my name. So I went to Minnesota because I thought, man, Minnesota might be dope. I'm, I'm going to see the Twins. I'm going to see the – uh wild i'm gonna see the timberwolves i'm a huge sports dude when i move out here i didn't see none of that i was like what the hell i was like what's going on i said i was like i'm like two hours away from minneapolis and i'm more closer to south dakota so i totally understand and this was my first time Bree, that i ever moved to the cold where it was negative temperatures and i was like this is this is a different kind of cold like i can deal with 30 yep. degrees degrees but negative two that was tough i was like all right my next move i'm moving something a little bit warmer <laughs> a little bit warmer when i move next so i totally understand that um i want to ask you some favorite questions uh and these are just okay. some favorite questions i came up with and you just give me the real based upon some of these questions okay so here we go favorite oh. meal you like to cook Ooh, um, I love cooking seared scallops with spinach or asparagus and okay. um, a seared salad on the side. You fancy. Okay, I like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. I like that. Um, favorite concert you've ever attended? Ooh, favorite concert I've ever attended? Um, not necessarily a big fan of this person but their concert was tremendous just because they're a great performer um and that would have to be it's a tie between bruno mars and britney spears oh okay okay so you're not a big fan of bruno mars i i'm a i mean i'm a fan of both um i'm more of a fan of like metal but um oh, they were just okay. great performers like they put on an amazing performance they did. They did. Um, You know, Bree, I, I don't know if I've crossed over to that genre yet of metal. You know what I'm saying? I, it, it's it's something that I tried, but the mosh pits, I ain't really with all that. Um, But there's there's a couple bands that's close, close to <laughs> like metal. You know, uh, I don't know if you know about Five Finger Death Punch. I don't know if you know about them or not, but um, they're, they're okay. They're pretty Five good. Death Punch. Uh, yeah, I like Five Finger Death Punch. They're they're pretty fun. I've been okay. really into pirate rock recently, so oh, that's always okay. been a nice one. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. All right, I feel you on that. Okay, favorite place you've ever traveled to? Belize. 
Oh, you got to tell me about that. Was that like a family yeah, so trip, a school trip? What was that? Family trip, and it was unbelievable. There were there were a lot. It was a definitely vacation that was one to remember because of the ups and downs that were just in the vacation that happened. Like everyone got over a hundred bug bites, but then we pretty much only ate lobster because that was their main source of food from the islands, and it was lovely. And then, you know, yeah, sure, we couldn't get into our hotel room and like had to like break open the door, but at the same time, we had a lot of fun. And it was it was just a really, really memorable trip. And I took that years and years and years ago. And I still remember it today. So it was, as I we all like to say, unbelievable. Wow. Okay. Unbelievable. You you giving me some quite <laughs> giving me some good good material right now, girl. I like that. Okay. Two more of the favorites. <laughs> favorite sport you like to watch on TV. This is a two part two part question. And favorite sport you like to attend in person. Ooh, okay. Um, well, I would have to say, um, favorite sport to watch on TV. Uh, you know what? Ugh, a part of me is going to die when saying this as a former footy I am. Um, football. I love football. Like, I grew up loving football, so that's my favorite sport to watch. Um, Are we talking about American watch? football or soccer? Oh, yeah. American football. Okay. Okay. Uh, gotcha. I love me some American football. Mm -hmm. Um, Favorite sport to watch in person? Honestly, baseball. Okay. Okay. All right. So are you a Indianapolis Colts fan? No. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> okay. What well, well, who's your football team? Who's my, your football my team? Teams, my my professional teams are all over the place. Okay, oh. so my professional teams are all over the place because I live everywhere. So um, football team, professionalized, um, I really like the Rams. Oh, okay. Mm, Rams, I got you. Okay, I'm a Chargers fan, so I guess we're in the same stadium. Uh, so I like that. That's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. Um, last of the favorite. Favorite restaurant you like to eat at? Um, that one's hard. Mm. You that know, I ask really, the hard hitting uh, questions here, Bri. I ask hard hitting questions on here. Okay. I guess the local steak joint that's like down here, um, Prime Forty Seven in Carmel. Okay. Hmm. Prime Forty Seven. Uh, I don't think I've ever been there when I when I normally go to any uh Indiana. So I'm gonna have to try that out. Prime Forty Seven. I like that. Um, let's talk about your day to day, right? Being a sports director, being a play by play commentator, talk about every. I mean, we all know every day that we go in to do sports, every day that we go in to do journalism, every day is different. There's never going to be a day that's going to be the exact same. Um, talk to me about your process of getting ready for that. Talk to me about your day to day, what you do, some of your responsibilities, um, being a sports director and being a play by play commentator. So um, I want to say that I'm a former sports director because I am trying to get a new job. Uh, my contract just ended, but oh. um, I can talk about my day, -to -day that just ha that like I used to go through every day. Sure. Or, and what and what you do now? Uh, talk about some of the things you do now as well. OK, so let's start with what I did before. So um, kind of a day to day. And obviously, like you said, everything is completely different every single day. You don't really know what's going to happen and you don't know sure. what hours you're going to work. Um, and you kind of just have to figure it out on the fly. But, um, yep. I'd say like a normal day, a normal schedule is, um, I wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning and then I go to work out at, well, in between 10, 11, you know, wake up, brush your teeth. And then, um, I like to meditate for like 10 minutes and mm. then 11 o'clock I go work out and I pretty much work out from 11 to like one third, one o'clock wow. and then one thirty, I um, get ready at, at the gym and then go into work by two from two to two 30. I'm um, just researching things that have happened, contacting um, SIDs and just like kind of also scouring Twitter over like, you know, seeing high school kids commit 
seeing, you know, what's the news, like who's on what watch list now for football, sure. baseball, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. Um, right. And just kind of seeing where I can run the show. And then by 2.30, I have normally a good idea of what I'm going to put into the six o'clock. So then I stack it and write it from about, well, three o'clock is when we have our meeting, um, just of with whatever, whatever was covering them that day. Then from right. pretty much like 3.15 to five, I write and, you know, edit and produce the two and two minute and 15 second long sports block for the six. And then at five o'clock, I do my makeup. And by that time, I have roughly like 30 minutes till I go on air to like just reread over my scripts, make sure I'm sounding accurate and <laughs> what I am delivering. And um, then I go on air. And after I go on air, I go to a game, whether depending on what season we're in. So during the fall season, I really like to split up going to women's soccer, boys' soccer for high school, and then we'd have volleyball for high school. I'd probably spend Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at each of those three sports. Okay. Thursday was always dedicated to um, produce soccer. And then um, Friday, we obviously had football. Saturday is yep. um, Big Ten football with Purdue. And then whatever else. So, yeah, that's kind of like a week-to-week -week kind of thing. That's th That's the fall. But then, you know, in the spring – with Changes baseball and softball playing every day of the week, pretty much. Yep. You just kind of alternate. So I like to alternate between like softball, baseball um, for high school, and then softball and baseball for college. Just kind of showing love to a lot of the different sports because where um, we have our primary coverage, um, there. when I came in to take over the sports department, I changed it from more of a Indianapolis focus so a lot of like Pacers and Colts coverage to more of what can our viewers get here that they can't get anywhere else? High school sure. coverage, Purdue coverage. So changed it to more of that and viewership went up because of it. But yeah, changed it to high school and Purdue. And so just kind of rotating, covering, making sure we cover all the bases with those sports and more sports. Obviously, I'm leaving out a ton, but giving a good enough coverage to everybody because my biggest thing as a sports director especially with like the high school kids because i remember being in high school like running around and absolutely it would be really cool if someone was at my game, like you know shooting it but my yep. goal as a sports director because i put myself in the kids shoes i was like i want every kid to see themselves on tv at least once and in turn i want every parent or every loved one of a parent to try and see their kid or their kid's school at least once I feel that. I mean, obviously, you can get Pacers and Colts coverage nationally, like anywhere, right? Anytime that you want to focus in on those local stuff, people are going to more appreciate that. Anytime you do games, feature stories, uh, editorials, anything locally, people are always going to pay more attention to that, especially the smaller towns. Um, I'm in a small town, so I definitely appreciate that. Um, in your next venture, is that something that you want to duplicate? Do you want to be another sports director? Do you want to try a different role? I would honestly be grateful for whatever role came my way, but okay. um, I would love to not. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind being a sports director somewhere else because I think it's a great opportunity, and also I already have all the skills to be a sports director, so I know how to run the show basically. But um, mm -hmm. I would like to take more of like a reporting role or just like, I hate to say backseat role, but not sports director role is what I'm saying. Because um, like sure. I would love, uh, my, my, my favorite thing is just to learn. I like to learn. I like to grow. And I feel like as a sports director and my station, um, the only way I could learn and grow was by sending my stuff off to people that I knew in the industry from all across Ooh. the united states because right. they would give me feedback and i didn't really have any feedback to go off of uh just at my station so i would like to kind of maybe take a backseat and just learn and just be like a sponge and soak more stuff up um but i'd be happy with whatever role came to me next i love that um let's talk about mental health 
and work-life balance. I mean, obviously, you seem like a pretty personable person. I certainly wouldn't mind hanging out with you, for sure. And I'm sure you have many <laughs> friends down there in Indiana that you hang out with, family. But, you know, there's an A-side to this, right? You pretty much explain what the A-side is. Giving a chance to do something different that's not really boring. This job is definitely not boring. You do something different every single day. You're always on the move. Uh, I cover 12 high schools and also cover a college out here. And I know for a fact that we're always on the go doing different stuff every single day. But there's also a B-side. And the B-side is it can get lonely at times doing sports because your nights and weekends, right? Your days off are not the typical days off of business type of days. Like you're off on one some of the weirdest days in the middle of the week. Uh, you're getting off at late at night. So now you got to try to either – garner your friends around the time that you get off because they, you know, around the station or get off at the same time, or you're just not going to be able to hang out with anybody. So talk about how do you keep your mental health strong being in this industry, but also keep that work-life balance. So I am a huge advocate for work-life balance. Um, I've always said, I'm not like living so that I can work. I work so that I can go live my life. So um, mm -hmm. I definitely capitalize a lot on PTO and I try and have as limited amount of days left at the end of the year <laughs> as possible. Sure. Me um, too. Yep. But, so yeah, like I like to take like three day weekends here and there because I need it. Um, and, you know, I always will put my family and my friends first, like no matter what, um, because at the end of the day, like my like mom, my dad, my dogs, my sister, my fiance, like my fiance's family now, like they're bigger than work at the end of the day. So, you know, especially with like now that I'm planning a wedding for next year, I'm like, huh, okay. So work-life balance. Yeah. So work-life balance has always been very big to me. Um, whenever I leave work, I don't um I don't necessarily like to talk about work. Um and then I will never check my email when I leave work. Like, cause if you need me, you can text me. Like if it's urgent, you have my cell phone number, always call or text. That's like, and I've always made that clear. But when I leave, like I'm, I'm, I'm off the clock and I am yeah. not going to return to be on the clock anytime soon um, right. unless you need me in. So that's how I balance work life. I, I will say though, I was very, very fortunate at my last station to, um, have had my weekends off. So during football season, I was Tuesday through Saturday with Sunday and Monday off. But yep. then after football season, when, you know, you have basketball playing every day of the week, when you have baseball and softball playing every day of the week, we mm -hmm. were just like, I went Monday through Friday. Okay. So that was, I guess, I like that, but that was, but that was one of the perks of being a sports director. So it kind of like, you know, has its ebbs and flows like any job, you know, like, Hey, you're in charge of everything, but you get your weekends off. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. No doubt. Um, I I love the I do 10 hour days. So I do 10 hour days, uh, mainly on the weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is my schedule. Um, and then I'm off the middle of the weeks. So I love that. Um, because the, if I could work the least amount of days with well, most hours, I'm with it. Totally with it. Um I want to ask this question. Hour days in our industry don't feel like anything. Like I they pull don't. tens on the regular. I feel like. Right, right. So uh, you know, we already work like really different hours anyway. So working ten hours, that's like going to do a story, going to do an interview, come back, uh, editing photos, shooting photos, writing. When you do all that in a day. Sometimes eight hours, you're like, damn, I don't have enough time of the day. <laughs> like, if I got to cut out stories, I got to move this to that, I got to move this to that. So 10-hour days are mm -hmm. great for me. Absolutely amazing. Um, If somebody, Bree, were to come up to you, uh, maybe a recent graduate or maybe somebody who's an intern or maybe somebody who's see a little bit seasoned like myself, right, Um, and they said, I want to do what you do. I want to be a news supporter. I want to be a sports director for um, a company. What is some advice that you would give that individual? I would tell them to intern first and foremost, um, because it's you're going to see exactly what you do when you intern, and you're going to 
like oh, some stations at lower markets especially will use interns and like you know put them on air and some like other stations that are probably like a little, little bit higher i mean you're just going to be like a coffee runner but you're still going to see some stuff which is smart but right I, I would say definitely intern and try and intern at a place where you know that you're going to get experience because when you see and when you live the day to day um mm -hmm. you're going to have a better understanding of the industry and what it takes to be there now i will also tell them that it's going to be really hard um the industry is literally designed to weed you out and you will make no money you you will make nothing um doesn't matter what your title is if you're at the bump you are making nothing so yep. you either need to go in with a clear mind of okay i can do this i'm going to grind through this and we got this or you're going to be weeded out because a lot of people are weeded out in the industry even vets who are in this for 15 plus years you mm -hmm. know there always comes like a stopping point and if you don't have the drive anymore that's totally okay do not beat yourself up over it like this is right. a very draining industry but, but um also just try your best and have fun with it and if it's not for you it's okay you you will find another thing i promise <laughs> And that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, on here with uh, media personality, I should say, Bree Shackleford on my Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. That's the A and B side that we're talking about, right? Like you said, don't fret if this is not for you, right? You can try it out and it's okay. You make that business decision and say, okay, this is not for me. That's awesome. And then some people say, this is really something I love to do. I wake up every day loving this, but you're absolutely right. People need to know that, okay, just because you're a sports director or somebody in a hierarchy position, don't think that we are making, like, boatloads of money. <laughs> it's, it's just not happening like that. People see you on TV, Bree. They see the pretty pretty lady talking about sports, doing her thing, but they really don't know the behind the scenes. Like, sometimes you may be a one-man band where you got to carry around equipment, you got to set up equipment, go on site. Sometimes you may have to call sources and they cancel on you last minute. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're trying to figure out what kind of story uh, you work in different type of hours where like, like we talked about before um, people just don't know the behind the scenes. And that's what I love to do about this podcast is that is bringing people's stories to the forefront. Like people are not just saying what they're doing in front of the camera, but they're saying what they do also behind the scenes um, and what you talked about. Right. And also making that decision, which this is a great segue I want to know how hard was it ultimately to make the decision to exit from the sports director role? I knew it probably had to be a weighing kind of decision to make. Yeah, um, it was one of those things where my contract was ending and I loved the area that I worked in and I had a lot of fun, but I also want to grow as an individual. Right. So it was, right. it was funny actually on um, when I said goodbye on my last show, um, I said, I, I started tearing up and I was like, oh, I didn't think I'd tear up at all. But, um, you know, the place really meant a lot to me. WLFI right. really shaped me, helped me grow and like as an individual. So it was really hard to leave. But at the same time, I think it was necessary for um, just my personal growth. And and that's mm -hmm. OK. Like if you feel like, you know, you need to grow and get out. I mean, it was hard, but it was necessary. And while the future remains a little bit uncertain right now you know i'm excited to see what happens because i would never have the possibility of looking to the future if i would have just stayed complacent in where i was and that's another thing i don't i don't really like being complacent i always strive to do better probably the sure. athlete in me yep. not gonna die anytime soon so um it was hard but it was necessary and i'm excited for what lies ahead absolutely i mean being complacent and that's definitely the competitiveness in, in you. No question about it. You don't want, you want to be the best at whatever you're doing and you want to have fun with whatever you're doing. So I totally understand that. Um, we've now reached a portion where we've come to this or that. Uh, so what this is, is basically me throwing out a couple of things at you and you get to choose one or the other. Um, are you with me, Britt? Yes. Okay, here we go. So we're going to start. This is going to depend a lot on our, Future friendship, Bree, this first question, okay? Popeyes or KFC? Popeyes. Okay, you passed the test. 
All right. So we good. We good. We all to a great start. Here we go. Chicken wing flavors, barbecue or lemon pepper? Lemon pepper. Okay. Do you like your wings wet or dry? Depending on, oh, I guess I have to pick one or the other. Okay, dry. Okay. And do you like bone-in or boneless wings? Bone-in. Okay, so so you're somewhat of a messy eater because you say you like your wings dry. Pardon? I said you're somewhat of a, a, a messy eater because you like your wings dry. Oh, no, I eat my wings with um, a fork. <laughs> oh, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. These I next don't like to get my hands dirty. <laughs> oh, okay. So you are not a messy eater at all. No, I don't like to get my hands dirty. I feel it. I feel it. Okay. So these next four have to do with concerts you rather attend. Okay. So okay. which concert would you rather go to? Kendrick Lamar or Drake? Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> okay, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Which concert would you rather go to? J. Cole or Lil Wayne? J. Cole. Hmm, okay, I'm with you on that. Which concert would you rather attend? Would you rather attend uh, Breaking Benjamin or Slipknot? Ooh. I have to go with Slipknot. Uh, Breaking Benjamin is really good, though. They're really good. I like them. I like them. Good. I know that was hard. That was a hard one, right? I feel it. I feel that it. Was. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Here we go. Here we go. Next one here. Which concert would you rather go to? Would you rather go see Corn or would you rather go see Limp Biscuit? Limp Biscuit. I feel you on that. I love me some Fred Durst. Love me some Fred Durst. Okay. All right. Here we go. Which sport would you rather play? Badminton or bowling? Oh, badminton, 100%. Are you good at badminton? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Well, if you're in Indiana, by the time I get to Indiana, we're going to test that theory. That's for sure. We can. You'll take okay. the L. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see about that. Um, Which sport would you rather watch on TV? Baseball. Or hockey. Um, baseball. Okay, which sport would you rather watch on TV? Basketball or softball? Basketball. Mm, okay, all right. Do you like desserts? <laughs> do you like desserts? Yeah, I do. Oh, I, I okay. have a very bad sweet tooth. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna name four desserts, and you gotta choose one of them that you'll never eat again. Okay, this or that. Here we go. Okay. So candy is the first one. Okay. The next one is cake. The next one is ice cream, and the last one is cookies. Which one are you getting rid of that Easy you'll never eat? Wow. Really? Really? Okay. I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't oh. have it. <laughs> well, then hell, Brie. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Okay. For sure. Uh, do you eat potato chips? No. So you don't eat, okay. So here we go. I got two more of the concert ones that we're going to ask you about. Okay. Which concert would you rather go to? Okay, would you rather go see Big Sean or would you rather go see Eminem? Uh, Eminem. Eminem? Okay. Which concert would you rather go see? Last one. Brandy or Monica? I don't know who they are. No, you don't. Don't say that. Bree, don't say that. Don't, oh, hell no. Brandy and Monica, the boy is mine? I don't know oh. who they are. Oh, Bree. Okay. Yeah, we're we going to have to uh, update your Rolodex of music. We're going to have to do that. It's okay. I'm going to send you a playlist. <laughs> I'm going to send you a playlist of songs. And next time we talk, you're going to have to listen to it. That's all right. That's fine. 
We just gonna leave it on that, girl. <laughs> we gonna leave it on that. that I feel it. <laughs> if Bree wasn't involved in sports and journalism, what career choice would she have chosen, and why? Um, she probably would have gone to law school, and she would either be a sports agent, or um, she would be trying to work in the name, image, and likeness initiative that we're seeing across college sports right now, just so she could still be involved in sports. And, uh, you know. <laughs> Bree, the question was, if you're not involved with sports and journalism, oh. you got to do it. <laughs> okay, so I can't be involved in sports at all. Um, I'd yeah. probably be the insurance attorney. Okay. Okay, got you, got you. No, I, I, love it's hard to I love it. I love Like every single day is different. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. That's amazing. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. No, I, I normally like asking that question because for me, I would be in theater. That's what I would be because uh, I love plays. I okay. love plays. I love theater. I love musicals. I love stuff like that. So I love asking that question to people that's involved with sports because you get some very different answers for sure. So I love that. Uh, what are some of your favorite stories that you have done uh, as a reporter? Uh, maybe some stories you did in a local community that you really love. Um, One of my favorite stories that comes to mind is about the seven-year-old wrestler. Um, she wrestled with her brothers and then she's just kind of like breaking boundaries of like women in wrestling kind of thing and she's like so so little but already like winning world championships and everything like that so that was really cool i would say her day but i don't want to say it on here that's okay that's all right we could talk offline that'd be cool um is there any other stories that come to mind that uh that was maybe some of your favorites or maybe a certain game that was like an unbelievable game that um, you watched that was like overtimes and stuff like that. <clears throat> oh, did 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 you hear me? Yeah, I did. Um I'm okay. trying to think. Okay. I oh, okay. so I really, really liked so I really, really like um well, pretty much any story I did with a Purdue athlete. Like, I really like telling the story of, like, Purdue's kicker this past year. Um, okay. It was awesome just to kind of – that's that's somebody that you don't normally, like, hear a lot about or think a lot about, but a sure. very vital role in the team. And he wasn't there – he wasn't their extra point kicker. Like, he was their kickoff kicker. <laughs> so, wow. I was like, oh, okay. Like, again, it's just a player that is vital to the team that you don't normally, like, you know, get to talk a lot about. Um. I really love doing one-on-one uh, um, -on -one interviews with Big Ten Freshman of the Year in women's basketball and then Big Ten Freshman of the Year in football, Dylan Thieneman. Um, Love doing those one-on-one -on -one interviews. Also did like a fun one-on-one -on -one shoot around with another women's basketball player getting to know her. Showed my yeah. horrific, horrific basketball skills at the <laughs> same time. But it's fine. Um, and then games that come to mind – so one game in particular that comes to mind is Purdue men's basketball versus Northwestern at home. They won it oh, yeah. in overtime. Oh, yeah. That was insane oh. to be at. It was so much fun. But honestly, their whole run this year was just so much fun to be at. Just being at every single one of their games was so cool. Did you get a chance to go to any of the tournament games? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, but two, but Purdue made it to the championship game. Yep, they did. Um, yes, I was there for the first and second round. I was there for their Elite Eight win. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get sent to the it's the Final Four in the championship round, and that was just due to it was it was total business decision. So I I will I will stand by on this. I'm like that was so smart from a business decision from a community standpoint. Oh, it hurt my heart not to go, and obviously I want to go, but um, community standpoint. It was a bummer we didn't go, but business standpoint, it made sense because we already had a um, reporter out there, like through our sister station, who to just send us stuff back, which, okay. I mean, you can't record the game, so whatever. But yeah, I would say the whole run was really, really fun. Now, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, tell me, what is maybe some top four events that you would like to cover? So, i.e., for example, for me, uh, Super Bowl. Olympics, NBA Finals, uh, and also a World Series. 
those four will probably be top four with an honorable mention being uh, the NCAA football championship game. So what are some top four events that you would like to cover and go to? I would love to cover the Men's World Cup, the Women's World Cup, okay. the Olympics, and sorry, the Summer. Well, actually, I'm going to say Olympics as in a broad term because I also want to do spring, I mean, summer and winter Olympics. So I'm just going to say Olympics in general. Um, okay. I really like to cover um, the Winter X Games. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be pretty dope. Uh, I mean, obviously, the World Cup, if I'm not mistaken, is coming to the U.S. in 26. Uh, that would be pretty amazing to, to be able to cover that. The Olympics is definitely coming here in 28 in, uh, in my um, hometown state of California. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, so I definitely am shooting for that for sure. Um, what is some advice that someone has gave you that you hold on dearly to? And it was actually kind of recent. Um, don't stress. Everything will work out. You'll be okay. This has happened to so many people, including me. You're fine. Breathe. And just trust the process. And I was like, okay. <laughs> who, now, who told you that? Um, Megan McEwen. Ah, uh, yes. I do know that. She is a play-by-play -play for the Big Ten. Yes, she's broadcaster. No doubt about it. Big time broadcaster up there. Um, do you know Do you know also, uh, I've heard of her, but I haven't talked to her like I did with Megan. Uh, Zara Stevenson and Sloan Martin? I've met her. I've actually met them both um, once, but I haven't spoke with them um, and have the connection with them like I do with Megan. Yep, I got you. I got you. Say less. Um, we're coming almost to the end, Bree. Uh, we got rapid fire here. Rapid fire that I just the first thing that comes to your mind. I want you to blurt it out. Okay. Oh God. So here we go. Favorite color. Pink. Favorite drink. Sprite. No, I don't like Sprite. Um, sorry, <laughs> sparkling water. You I like how you said I, I know the first thing. It's like, no, I don't like Sprite. I got you. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Favorite board game? Monopoly. Oh, you know, I'm a beast with Boardwalk and Park Place now. <laughs> I'm a beast with that. Okay. Favorite card game? Does it? Oh, actually, I don't think that's a card game. Um, I really like BS. No, Euchre. I like Euchre. I want Euchre. You can throw 100. Wow. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Um, oh, it's, a yeah. mid, it's a Midwest thing. Okay. Got you. Say less. Um, if you had three albums to listen to with no skips, what would those albums be? Ooh, Cocaine Jesus by Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Can I name all of them by the same artist? Sure. Um, or okay, no, we'll, we'll switch it. Yeah, Cocaine Jesus by Rainbow Kitten Surprise, um, Mission to Mars by Rainbow Kitten Surprise, okay. and Hotel California by the Eagles. Wow, that is that's a little bit two ends of the spectrum right there. Hotel California and Rainbow Kitten. Uh, I, I like it though, I like <laughs> it. If you had three people that you could take on a vacation anywhere in the world, who would those three people be? Wait, could you repeat the question? You could out there for like a sec. Sure. If you can go on vacation anywhere in the world, uh, what three people would you take with you on vacation? I would take my mom and dad because they need a break, and I'd take my fiance. I love it. I love it. That's what's up. And once again, congratulations on that. Uh, when is the wedding? June 28th of 2025. I love it. I love it. Okay. Love, I love to see love. We got a few more to wrap it uh, fire. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Hamburgers or tacos? Tacos. I'm Mexican. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, French fries or onion rings? Onion rings. Mm, okay. Surprisingly, I've never had onion rings in my life. Never had. How? Yeah. Yeah, uh, them curly fries are something different. I just, I love them curly fries, yeah. So that's just me, you okay? You didn't say curly fries, you said french fries. 
I did. But curly fries, French fries, you know, crinkle cut fries, any fry. It don't matter. It's pretty good. Um, that's for sure. I just never had onion rings. I never had it. Uh, maybe when I come out there to uh, Indiana, sorry, you can tell me some places I can go. Deal. Okay. Last one of the rapid fire. Um, would you rather have, or would you rather be, I should say, an uh, anchor, reporter, or director? I'd rather be a reporter because I like being in the thick of things. I love it. I love it. Is there anything else that you would like to add about yourself? Uh, maybe a future job coming up or anything else you would like to talk about before you and I conclude? Um, I think it's important to also touch on to up and coming journalists safety. Um, like in the industry, because like now a lot of jobs are transitioning to MMJs or MSJs we're going to be alone in shooting. And like, personally, I've been like grabbed like three times by like people at events. So like oh, safety wow. wise, make sure that young journalists are near like other journalists in like a hub when like you're doing live shots. It might be distracting, but just be around other people so that like you're staying safe and everyone's kind of watching each other's backs. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. I appreciate your transparency for sure. Um, I do want to ask this bonus question. Uh, internships, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that people should do internships without getting paid? Now, here's my here's my thought process on it. Internships, you know, if you if you can afford it, great, that's fine. But I think for the most part, if you're doing a job, you should get some type of compensation for that internship, I think, in my opinion, um, because a lot of internships out here, uh, you given a lot of time to it. And sometimes you may not have, you know, the feasible fees. It's not going to like, you know, uh, it's not, it doesn't have to be a whole lot of money, but it has to be something. And it doesn't even have to be money at all. But I would just say something of a benefit to that. What do you think about people that do in uh, non-paid internships versus paid internships? So I think experience is experience regardless of whether it's paid or not paid. I think that if you're doing an internship based on class credit, you shouldn't expect compensation because your compensation is class credit, um, yep. like for college and you know high school and stuff like that. But if you're doing internship experience just to gain experience and you aren't getting paid, I mean, obviously it's up to the discretion of whoever's hiring you, the employer, what their policies are and all that fun mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I think that you should be compensated, but, um, okay. yeah, I, th I think, I think interns should be compensated unless they are doing it for class credit. Um, mm -hmm. but also you just kind of have to know going into it, like you have to be okay with not being paid and doing a lot of work and just getting like experience and networking. Cause it, with internships, like you're not, you're not just seeing like what happens. You're also networking with people who know people who know people and that can lead to a lot of other things down the road. So it's honestly just like a toss up. I think, but I think if you're doing it for class credit, no, but if you aren't doing it for class credit, you probably should be compensated. What would you do? Um, Class credit, I'd be fine not getting paid because I'm yeah. your class, but um, as an intern, I would, even if it was an unpaid position, at like let's say a top 25 market or even like a network i would probably go unpaid just because at that point it's just invaluable experience and you're getting connections that not a lot of people have so I, I you, you just gotta, you gotta kind of bite the bullet at that point and just be like yep it is what it is but look at all the benefits i'm getting rather than being an intern somewhere else getting paid and maybe not getting the exposure that you could somewhere else I feel it. Um, you know, internships are great. I, I love them. I love when they're out there and about. You should definitely do internships because, like you said, you do gain experience. Uh, you gain experience on what to do, but you also gain experience on what uh, you don't want to do mm -hmm. in the industry in the industry as well. So uh, both ways, no doubt about that. I love it. Um, Bree, it's been a pretty interesting conversation. I love it. Um, Please uh, stay in touch. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and a, four, a happy 4th of July to you and your family as well. 
again, congratulations on being engaged. And um, we would definitely be in touch. Thank you. Yes. And happy Independence Day. And yes, I can't wait to stay in touch with you either. <laughs> Absolutely. You take care, Brie. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.